Does it, oh, that's it. There should be now. Okay. Stop share. Technology, huh? Yeah, we're here. We made it. <laughs> I'll get rid of these other things that are up. Yeah, no problem. Hi, everyone. If you're here, hello. Welcome to Portobello Photography School. And just write in the chat where you're from. Tell us what you're drinking. I'm drinking tea. And I just found this cup in my cupboard that says weather. Yay. <laughs> um, what are you drinking, Margaret? Uh, I'm just drinking water. Water. <laughs> yeah. Trying to be healthy for a change. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to check that we are live. Can anyone comment below just to tell us if you can see us? That would be wonderful. It's hard to tell, but there are seven people watching. So, oh, well. oh, hi, Alan. Alan Sutherland. Hello from Glasgow. Good. Well, take it that people can hear us because Alan has told us hello. <laughs> So um, we've just had a quick chat anyway, but this is totally informal, but it's a chance for me to record oral history of photography in Portobello from the, from the beginnings of photography, really. And we've worked together a few times over the last decade. So I see you as a, and Peter, your partner, mm -hmm. both as a big part of the history of photography, especially in Portobello. And um, I thought that it'd be nice just to share some of the chats that we would have anyway, but yeah, Portobello is a great place to be. I know, we're so lucky. I feel so lucky every day. It's the beach, isn't it? And you've got that amazing panoramic view out. Can you see the sea from where you are just now? I can see the sea from where I am just now. Uh, yeah, it's great just having a view of that kind of big sky. I think open spaces, is, it, can be, it can be out in the countryside, it could be in a desert. I think there's something about open spaces that is so inspirational. Definitely. And if you're beside the sea, yeah, you have that open space, but you also have that reflection between mm -hmm. the sky and the water. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? And um, I've sent you a set of questions already, but just for anyone who doesn't know Margaret Drysdale, she's a fantastic mm. photographer and part of a, a couple of lens based people like you and Peter. Peter's a photographer and filmmaker, your husband. Yeah. And Margaret studied at Napier University in the 90s. Oh no, the eighties. Eighties, oh yeah, um, like years, and years ago. <laughs> so um, Napier Photography Department, old guard. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. That's not the best way to describe it, is it? But you're a part of the same um, sort of route into photography that I had, and also um, we've got a mutual friend, Nikki Bird, who mm -hmm. has done a talk an amazing blether before and the first time we met we were just talking about was um the national galleries of scotland and i worked with wifey women in focus in edinburgh the group yeah. that you run and we did a workshop based on august sander and it was shooting on film and i got all the films processed and printed we were still in film then golly yeah yeah well i don't think we were i think we just had the budget to shoot on black and white film and right. it was like c41 black and white film but then there was that amazing moment where a reenactment society appeared when we went out to make portraits and it was lovely. And then since then we've done projects in Wester Hills um, yep. at, I've forgotten the name of the building. Wheel, Wheel Darkroom or we Gate 55? Gate 55 with 55. the Welcome Inn yeah. and the Scottish Canal Trust and we did a walk-in project along the canal which was lovely and it feels mm -hmm. like not that long ago but it's a few years isn't it? I think it must be at least a couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah, I think it was before my daughter went to nursery. Right. So yeah, I remember us getting the bus back sometimes. <laughs> from Hills. Trying to get back from Worcester Hills. I know, it's like oh, worst, yeah, the worst um, traffic time in Edinburgh <laughs> of the week. Yeah. It was it was worth it, and we worked with some amazing people, really lovely people. So. That was good. Um, so I think we'll just go straight into the question. So Margaret is a mm -hmm. photographer. She works for the council doing a lot of community arts and things like that. And she also runs Wifey, Women in Focus in Edinburgh. And Wifey is just a brilliant group. And if you're female and into photography, join. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. And a lot of my students from short courses end up joining Wifey and like mm -hmm. just to keep that dialogue going, which is lovely. Um, so it's the, a strange time to join though with it with us being in lockdown yeah I think it's a strange time for everyone so we just have to go with that yeah 
Uh -huh. And you can join and then just wait for things to ease as well. I know a few of my ex-students joined in March and they've not been able to participate yet, but they will. They're ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, that's a good starting point for the first question, which is what does community mean to you? Yeah, I think it is a good start to the question because I think you've got different types of community. So obviously Portobello, there's a fantastic community in Portobello and it's about the location. So, you know, the people that live here, we're all part of this amazing community um, where you can be walking about and all you want to do is go and get something at Scott Mid and get back to cook it. And you end up bumping into someone and then you bump into someone else. Um, so you have to stop and have a chat. Uh, so there's definitely that kind of community that you can get from a place. Um, but you also have communities of interest. And I, this is where I would sort of probably put like wifey is in, its, in a way, it is a bit of a community because we're all women. We all love photography. We're passionate about photography. So we become like a community in that passion and that interest. Um, I've worked with people that use mental health services. I, I've worked a lot with them um, and using the arts. And I would definitely say that people that experience mental health difficulties, there is defi definitely a community around that as well. So you get communities of interest or where people have commonality. Um, that, so, the, so you get different types of community. And, Portobello is a great community to be part of. Um, so one, yeah. of the best. one of the best. And, and Wester Hills as well as a community. It's interesting, you know, the kind of, because there's different, like every community, I guess, there's like kind of communities of interest within the communities. Yeah. There? Like the walking group that we worked with and then the women with the welcoming. and. Yeah, yeah, you definitely get like communities a whole, um, there's different layers of community and individually, you know, you can, you can be part of different communities. Um, you can be part of kind of like, like a local community or it could be um, you know, a writing group community. So, so there are many, many different layers of community. Um, so yeah, community is a great thing. Yeah, I love community. And what does photography mean to you? What, oh, what does photography mean to me? Um, but I, th I think photography for me is about people's voices. And I suppose there's different ways because um, if I'm thinking about wifey and collectively, uh, I encourage us all to be thinking about um, yeah, women's voices, uh, women's position in, in society. Um, and I think the arts, and it doesn't have to be photography, but the arts and photography can be a great way of expressing um, yourself when often you might not have that voice. Um, and photography for me is also about um, just moments uh, and having the ability to kind of just be walking along and be inspired. And I think to have that ability to feel inspired because something catches your eye and you photograph it or you don't because yeah, you have a photographic memory. So yeah, all photographs end up in your mind and some end up through your camera or your phone camera. So um, I think that ability to be out and about and be inspired is really, really important because it gives you that ability to be inspired by life, by everyday things, and and you know, be inspired, be challenged, um, to be kind of aware of your surroundings. I think photography brings that to you. You know, if you're out and about and you're really into photography, I don't know about you, but my eyes are always kind of darting about and going, oh. I'm getting quite excited about it. So for me, photography is brilliant. It's just like part of part of me and part of my life. And I find it inspiring. I find it exciting. And so it's very, very important. Um, and I'm sure many other people that are passionate about photography and passionate about other things. Um, I'm not a writer, but I'm sure 
someone that's into poetry or writing. Maybe it also can be walking around and seeing things or hearing things or touching things and get that same sense of excitement and inspiration and so on. So I think that's what photography is for me. It's inspiration and excitement all rolled up into a nice ball. Yeah, that's a brilliant answer. And it's so true. You know, it's like we just find pictures everywhere, don't we, when we're looking around and it's it's nice. It can be hard to get anywhere on time. <laughs> mm, yes. but I remember us going through a tunnel in Wester Hills once as well, and there was like um, all this different graffiti, and we almost missed the bus chatting about <laughs> mm. all these surfaces. And then me and you running along. What's that big main road called to get the bus? Um, oh, it's so long now since I've been out that way because of oh. the lockdown. Oh yeah, uh -huh. the Calders, but it's heading out to the Calders. It heads heads out to yeah. yeah. But I remember some folk at the bus stop cheering us on, and we were like, ah, get the bus, get the bus, <laughs> distracted by the world always. Mm -hmm. And um, then, oh, do you know, I missed a question. I missed a question. <laughs> so we'll go backwards. And my next question is, what is your favourite photography quote? Oh, my favourite quote. Well, I had to look that one up because I don't really have one per se. But I think one that I did kind of pull out um, that I I feel is kind of relevant is um, a photography quote by Sarah Moon, uh, the photographer Sarah Moon, whom I actually love her stuff. Um, I've got her book Coincidences. Have you got it as well? Good. Um, so Sarah Moon's quote is, um, photography is always like a state of grace. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> It's always like a state of grace, like the appearance, yeah, like the appearance of something that I hadn't foreseen that surprises me and stops me. If I only did what I had in mind, um, there would be no emotion. It would be like keeping one's eyes shut rather than open, like theorizing rather than seeing. So I think I think that's such a great quote. And I think it's very much just like what I was just talking about. Um, if you try and plan something, um, it doesn't always work. But if you keep an open mind and you kind of keep that kind of visual awareness, then um, the world's open, everything's open and everything's possible. Um, so I quite like that idea that it's just about like being open to everything and not trying to kind of theorise it or control it or whatever. So. I think that's a good quote. Yeah, that's a brilliant quote. And I've not looked at this book for ages. So it's I'm a good book. To have a look. It's worth quite a lot, this book now. Do you know? Is it? Oh, I've had it. I've had mine for ages. So yeah, I'll never let my one go. But um, yeah, I remember just uh -huh. anyway, anyway, I won't go on about my my <laughs> own book, but um yeah, it's beautiful. And her work is so playful as well and um intuitive, isn't it? So I can see parallels between your work and her work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have my influences, I think, out there. <laughs> but I think, I think the thing about, you know, obviously, you know, um, I, you know, when I'm teaching photography, uh, I'm always saying to people, look at pictures, go to galleries, look at things, because you have to feed your, your visual mind. Um, and I know that maybe we all would like to think of ourselves as being unique and different and no one's ever done this before, but that's highly unlikely. Um, but what will happen is that by feeding your creativity in your mind, then you, um, you'll you resonate with the things that, that mean something to you, that you connect to. Um, so you'll see lots of things and some things will wash past you, but other things will go like, I love this. This is me. This is my kind of thing. And I think um, that book, Coincidences, and there are other books, um, but that one is very much like, yeah, you know, I like the kind of dark moodiness and the, the kind of, you can't always make out what's there and all that kind of stuff. And the way she uses colour as well. And yeah, it's great. Messy stuff. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> no, I like that mess. I like the messy stuff. <laughs> um, and if you could change one thing about the photography world, <laughs> what would it be and why? 
Um, I think this is a difficult question, um, and I think I find it quite difficult to um, really see anything. Um, I watched Paul recently, and I thought his answer was good about you know the, the about the cost of cameras or the technical stuff, and I would kind of agree with that. Um, I um, I think the great thing about nowadays is people have got mobile phones with amazing cameras and photography has become much more accessible. Um, I remember being at college and um, we had to have these pressure projects. Like you had to, you got the, the brief on the Monday and you had to have your work up on the Friday and which was quite stressful. And, and then everybody could see your work. And um, I always kind of, had kind of yeah I would look at the pictures and I've never been a very technical person like I'm not into techie stuff and I would look at the pictures and go yeah that's a very good picture really sharp clear got lots of tones and all that kind of stuff technically brilliant which not which was not me and I would think but it's a bit boring and so, so I was always much more passionate about things that that I felt connected to that excited me rather than things that were very controlled and um, and maybe were excellent photographs. I'm not I'm not saying they weren't good photographs, but they certainly weren't what I was aspiring to do. Um, but if you were doing the photographs that weren't technically brilliant, you were often marked down. So, so there was the aspiration, but then, you know, Napier at that time, you know, it wasn't like going to art college. It was a technical college. So fair enough that you, you were being judged on the technical capabilities and, and you know, how many tones you had and all that kind of stuff. It just wasn't me, but I enjoyed college and I met my husband. <laughs> So, so does that answer your question? I'm not oh, sure. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. And I remember finding that really difficult. And I've been having a conversation with a student who's gone the same path as me from Aberdeen College to art school. Um, and it is, it's so different because at college, your concepts aren't or weren't at that time as important as the finished polished product. And then when we went to Napier, by that time, it was very theoretical. And I remember struggling for a long time. All the things that I love now about it, oh, it was hard at the time <laughs> because it's such a shift. But it's that's education, isn't it? And it shifts your mindset in all these ways. It's amazing that you had that conviction when you were when you Start were now. Yeah, uh, yeah. I did quite a lot of experimental stuff when I was at college as well. Um, and I kind of, kind of was one. You know, I I went to college um, a bit later in life. And um, the, I remember that my, to get into college, um, I hadn't actually done any photography before. I had done art at school, but never photography. And um, so a friend of mine was helping me put together a, a portfolio for my applications, part of my application. And um, he lived in a cottage near Ochterarder up in the hills. And um, he showed he showed me how to process a film, and then I'd gone in. I don't think he was around, but um, I was processing my first film on my own, and I knew that he'd boiled the kettle, but I hadn't realised he'd checked the temperature. So I processed my first film, kind of I don't know what thirty degrees or forty degrees. <laughs> it did come out, and it did have a very interesting effect. So, and so that might have been a huge influence early on as well. Was it quite melty in contrast? Yeah, no, it wasn't melted. No, the emulsion was a bit cracked. Yeah, it was obviously very dense mm -hmm. because a lot of the silver had had kind of processed into really dense. So it was high contrast, very dense negative, and it had a kind of cracked, crack, like in the emulsion was cracked rather than the actual acetate or the film base. Um, so it does make, did make me think, well, you can push film processing to quite a large extreme, if you so wish. That's amazing. I'm just going to look at my question so I don't skip one this time. Um, tell us about the work you've made here in Portobello. 
And I'm just going to mute myself and switch off my camera for this bit, if that's OK. OK, I'll, um, I'm going to talk a wee bit about it. This is the stuff to do with wifey. Um, and Alicia has <coughs> already mentioned that um, wifey Women in Focus in Edinburgh it is a women's collective. And what we do is um, we run workshops, but we also, it's kind of really quite in, informal and um, we do different things at different times. And one of the things that we do is we go and see exhibitions here in Edinburgh. And then after the exhibition, um, wifey members are invited to create their own work in response to, um, to what they've seen. So, oh, host has got to disable my, the screen so I can share. Can you hear me, Alicia? Um, anyway, that, so we've that been. Work in. That should work now. That should work now. Um, so we'd been to the National Portrait Gallery to see the. Oh, which screen is it? This one. No, it's not that one. Where's it gone? Sorry about that. That's um, okay. Hmm? Uh, it's gone and maybe hidden. It's not that one. So. That's something else. And oh, why is it not there? Oh no. I don't want that. That's okay. Um, um it could be is your PowerPoint open. Maybe if you click on PowerPoint and then share the screen, that might yeah, work. I seem to have lost everything now. Right, what I'll do is um this should open it. Can people now see that? I've kind of lost myself. Oh. Um, <laughs> um, not worry about that. I can do without seeing myself. Um, yeah. Anyway, where was I? I was talking yeah. about... Yeah. Um, so this is this is the front page of the Wifey website. And we, I can't see it on... Oh, can on, you not? So see where you can see the icon of you when you share... Right, let me just close this then. And there will be a wee thing yeah. at the bottom just telling you that you're sharing as well. Right, so can we see me now or what? I can still see you actually. Oh. Can you see that now? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, it'll be quite good. <laughs> yes. Okay, hopefully we're quite good. Um, so with Wifey, we go and see exhibitions and um, following our visit to exhibitions, you know, we'll have a bit of discussion about the work. And um, we'd been to the Scottish National Portrait Gallery to see um, the exhibition by Vivian Sasson um, in and out of fashion. Which was, I don't know if anybody saw it, but it's quite a challenging exhibition. Uh, and after that exhibition, Wifey members were quite keen to um, do a wee workshop. So we organised a workshop um, down here in Portobello Beach. Uh, and we got this young woman offered to do some modelling for us. And we dragged down some mirrors because Vivian Sasson uses sometimes mirrors in her work. Um, so I'm just going to show you a few pictures of that session. Um, oh, which it's not doing. Oh, but right. Again, you're going to have to hang on because I'm not very techy, like I've just said. So I was just talking about that slide. Um, so yeah, so we spent some time on the Portobello Beach um, photographing um, with the idea of the work that we'd seen at the Scottish National Portrait Gallery and Vivian Sasson's um, fashion work. Um, and she does use mirrors and she also sort of disembodies the models quite a lot. And her images are always very bold as well. So we kind of got, took that one on board as we photographed down on the beach. Um, I really like this one on the left here where she's got the blue cloth kind of all, all covering her. And there's one of the wifey members um, um, down at the bottom there photographing 
the model. And this one. So it was good fun. It was um, quite exciting because we don't generally have anyone modeling except ourselves. Um, so it was quite nice to have a professional model come along and do this for us. So I think, can I escape and come back to see you all? Yeah, if you stop sharing, there you are. Stop. Okay, have I stopped sharing? Yes, and I can oh, see you. Terrible with this. No, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's the whole point of the blethers. It's laugh off all the all the quirks because do you know even when you get your head around Zoom, it changes a wee bit anyway. <laughs> Does it? Um, <laughs> yeah, so, lovely, so. Yeah, so so what my work around Portobello. So that was like an example of um, something that um, wifey did down here in Portobello, and you know Portobello Beach. Photographers and filmmakers love coming down to Portobello Beach. You see them quite often coming down here and, and taking advantage of, again, you know, that big sky, beautiful light. Um, we're kind of facing north here. Um, so it is great. And also, I, I, Wifey did something in Portobello Lightbox as well. We had an exhibition in there, um, which was Stop the Traffic. So it was... Um, as part of, I think it was maybe a part of International Women's Day, and it was, um, we had photograph of traffic trails, you know, you get when you have slow shutter speed, and put that in there, and I also did, I think you put a wee picture up of me about standing in the middle of Princess Street with a placard, stop the traffic, so obviously that was all about um, stopping trafficking of women, which exists unfortunately in Edinburgh. I mean, we all think Edinburgh is such a nice city and yeah, it couldn't possibly happen here kind of idea. So yeah, trafficking does happen, unfortunately, and it happens in Scotland and it happens in Edinburgh. Uh, and we need, to, we need to address that and try and challenge that all the time. Uh, I also was involved in Portobello Lightbox. Portobello Lightbox are great. I think you've also been involved in that. And, it's great. And um, my husband and I did a wee piece in Portobello light box, which was the shoe box. And we photographed lots of people's footwear and they were in Porto light box as well. And through um, the work that I was doing with people that use mental health services, I've um, participated or supported people in participating and putting exhibitions in Porto light box. So a great community resource. It'd be great to see more stuff in there. Yeah, definitely. The light box is fantastic. And at the moment, it's part of Window Wonderland, um, which is a, a walk-in tour around Portobello where just to acknowledge the fact that Christmas is different this year, people have decorated their windows and added them to a map. So you can, I know your downstairs neighbour's got a pretty cool window. Anyway. Yes, and I, um, I'm planning to do one as well. I think it's a brilliant idea. Yeah. Because during lockdown, I mean, I've been going walking regularly, um, but now with the darker evenings, mm -hmm. it's so much harder. But now that I know that there's all these amazing windows that you can come across, it's quite exciting and much better to go walking now, even in the dark. Yeah. It's there's some brilliant ones on Mount Lodge Place as well. Mount Lodge Place have gotten right into it. I think because Juliana Muir lives there, Juliana Capes. Um, and they've done their windows, but a lot of their neighbours have as well. So it's like, and then you go down to Windsor Place and there's a whole building where other, um, I, I won't name everybody where they live, but like a whole block of flats has collaborated and done things. Yeah. I think that makes me so happy. I'm going to have to go out walking more. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh, yeah, so. I think it's brilliant. I think it's good. And like you said, you know, Christmas won't be the same this year. But I think it's a great idea. And hopefully it'll be one that continues even beyond any kind of lockdown or, um, you know, you usually just see the Christmas trees and Christmas lights, but this has taken it to a whole new level. Oh, definitely. And you know, I kind of resisted doing it to start with. And I was like, oh, I just don't have time. And lovely Jennifer Elliott talked me into it. 
And one Saturday evening, I was like, do you know what? I'm just going to do this. And it was so therapeutic, just doing what Juliana said, mixing the washing up liquid with the paint. And yeah, uh -huh. so we all get things out of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's nice to feel like you're participating in something that's bigger and for everyone and public. And I really love that sort of when arts can be so accessible that mm -hmm. you, know, you don't need a PhD to. Mm -hmm. Are you, are you going to do something in your window, maybe? Oh, we have, yeah, we've done a couple oh, you have already. Oh, I'll have to check it oh, out. Ruth, have a look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I just used what we had um, about the house and mucked it up. <laughs> but um, the next question, which goes on quite well, is how does place reveal itself through the lens of your work? Hey, hmm. Well, I think, I mean, I think living in Portobello, you just can't but not be inspired. Um, I'm, I'm very lucky because I live on the promenade and I look out my window and I see the change in the light. Um, because, you know, photography is, as we all know, is painting with light. And um, yeah, having such an open view, um, kind of like you just, yeah, every day is different. And you know, sometimes the water's blue and calm, and other days it's stormy. And so, yeah, it just constantly inspires. Uh, most of the, I mean, as far as through the lens um, and, and photographs, then most of the stuff that I photograph uh, out and about or here at Portobello with often my phone camera, I have to say, um, is on my Instagram account, uh, which is under Molly McCall. And I think if you can see that I'm Molly McCall, <laughs> so like, I know it's very confusing because you're introducing me as Margaret Drysdale and there's a Molly McCall. So um, yeah, uh, but so I've got an Instagram account, which is Molly McCall. And I think a lot of my kind of that kind of work out and about kind of what I was talking about, like, you know, you're walking around and you kind of, something ca catches your eye and you're photographing it. And it's the same thing about being down here in Portobello. I look out the window and it's just amazing. And I have to go, oh, I have to photograph this. And some of that work ends up in my Instagram account. So yeah, so that's that's where, where it goes and, um, yeah, Portobello is definitely a place to feel inspired and excited about. And, and um, Brilliant. That's what I've got. I can find your Instagram yeah, account to share with everyone, but um, I have tagged you in the post about today. Mm -hmm. so I hope people can find you, but I just found a couple of different Molly McCalls who are not you. <laughs> um, but I'll post it in the chat later but yeah that's a lovely answer as well the yeah. next answer which um nikki has adapted the answer oh, with also yeah. like which was which notable but she changed it to which influential photographers have links to portobello and what can you tell us about them mm, yeah um so yeah this this is quite an interesting quite a good question um i mean obviously there's various photographers here that that you know and and i know of in some cases and it's great what you're doing with these conversations because you're kind of bringing them out from hiding sometimes um i i went to college with murdo mcleod who's a great photographer and lives here in portobello but the person that i i want to mention who i think is really influential is alina casina i think you know her and what i've and my my way of getting her to be part of our community here is that I first met her when she came to, uh, I was doing an adult education photography class at Portobello High School, the old one, where it was all very high rise. Um, and she'd come along to my class there. Uh, it was a camera and dark room class. And that's when I met her. Um, so that puts her in Portobello. And so I think fits into your question quite nicely. Uh, Alina's work, I, I loved her work. I love her work, um, which is City of Home. I don't know if you've seen it. It's really, really nice. 
Um, it's got such a kind of atmosphere and kind of, I think it's, it kind of, to me, it kind of evokes that idea of um, dreaming where you're kind of in a place, but not in a place. You're kind of, you kind of bridge over um, being located and not being located. Uh, so yeah, so I love that work, but probably the other thing that really, I think is very, very inspirational about what she does is her work with young people and children and vision. Um, I think it's fantastic what she's done. She's created, I think like, like we talked about community, she has um, created a community of young people passionate about photography and um, she's got her Instagram account, Children of Vision, and young people from across the world um, participate in sending photographs uh, and um, she, I know that she puts together exhibitions as well of these young people's photographs. Including your grandchildren. Hmm? Did your grandchildren not? My grandson was in one of the exhibitions. He um, he was here at my flat and the light was coming in the window and he, he um, was intrigued about how it was kind of creating the shapes on the walls. And he put his hand in and he says, take a photograph of that. It was his photograph, but I took it as, yeah, but it was his idea and his inspiration. And he had that um, exhibited as part of Children of Vision. So yeah, if you've got any young children um, and they love taking pictures, um, do check out um, Alina Casina's work and her Children of Vision work in particular. And I've just put a link to um, Alina's website on the on the Facebook, so people mm -hmm. can look. And, Hi, Alina. If you're, I'm sure if you're not here, you'll watch this later. I've not seen Alina for years either, and I hadn't thought about that connection with Portobello. But um, that's it's, that's brilliant. It, it is a big connection, <laughs> and yeah. um, and th and that class that she came to. I mean, it was like proper darkroom class. And I remember when she I remember how many years ago photographer and it just took off instant she just had that sort of um you know her heart went straight into it I think it was was it not John who used to work at stills photographed her wedding and she said I'm a photographer mm. and then right away she was making like quite prolific work mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. when she first moved to Edinburgh when was that about 17 years ago or something when she when Alina first came to Edinburgh yeah, I can't remember when I, I should have checked out in some way. I don't know if I if I could, but it's been a while since I was teaching adult education classes. Yeah. So I, I don't know. It might might be as much as 17, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, but she's done so well. And I just remember she was so I remember going to a photo festival, the first one I ever went to, and Alina was there. And it was, I was really nervous, proper imposter syndrome, you know, in street level, mm -hmm. they'd given me this grant to go along. It was called Rhubarb Rhubarb. Made some of my best photo friends there. And um, Alina, I remember before I review, she's like, I'm just going to go and meditate. And then she just went and sat in a window and meditated. And I was like, oh. mm -hmm. And she had like this, this tiny box or tiny portfolio and like, yeah, she's, yeah, check out her work. She's magic. She's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> And she has a link to Portobello, so yeah, uh -huh. yeah. which is lovely because I always think of Alina as like international photography scene now. So it's nice to kind of bring her back into mm -hmm. into the local. She's doing so well. Um, and then final question, Margaret mm -hmm. Molly, <laughs> is where can we see more of your work or their work? So I think you were going to show us some of your practice now, weren't you? I I will do. Um, I mean, I, I, most of my work is either on my Instagram page um, or on the Wifey website. Um, but what I wanted to do was share some of some bits of my work um, because there, it's not, it's, you know, I, I think it's, I don't have my own website, so you can't just go to my website, but you could find some of it um, within the Wifey website or the um, yeah, or my Instagram. But what I'll try and do is, is that working? Yep, it's just appearing. 
It's saying oh, wifey.co.uk not for sale. Cool. <laughs> so it's blank. Maybe just refresh it. Right, let's stop sharing and we'll try that again. Um, I don't know why my do. I'm going to have to go round and about for this, I think. Where is it that? No, sorry, folks. I will you get here. For you if you want. Do you want me to try and um, share it? No, I think if I open up the actual slide, I think for some reason maybe they closed down. Oh, I gonna I come on. Right. Now, let's see if I can do it. There it is. Share. So this is, um, I, quite often with um, Women in Focus in Edinburgh, um, we've exhibited quite often with, um, or during International Women's Day. And so this is um, a piece of work that I did for International Women's Day. And I kind, of, I kind of wanted to share that because it represents quite a lot of the work that I've done where I don't use a camera. Um, so I think most of the stuff that I'm going to show you here is stuff that I've been doing without a camera and also um, for or, um, exhibitions like International Women's Day. And this was called Flowers Don't Cut It and they were scans that I did um, of flowers and with the with the ribbons um, and the next one is stuff that I've been doing um, in the dark room uh, I started doing quite a lot of this stuff when I was at college and it's using photograms and I quite like playing around with kind of multi-layered images and this is an example of some of that and I think it was part of another exhibition um, as part of Wifey. I don't know how much these are up on the website and this these two pictures were done at college um, and they were stuff I got into doing photogram no not photograms solarization and actually working with solarized negative film and processing that in the dark room. Uh, I loved kind of playing around in the dark room and playing around with things like solarization. Uh, and that was done for a competition. And these pieces were part of the 16 days campaign. So I have these down as sketches, so they're not the final piece. But again, these are um, photograms that I've done in the dark room and they were like the, the starting point of work. And the 16 days campaign, what I did for this was, it was like a fictional diary. And so there were 16 pieces and the 16 pieces were kind of exploring um, like things like domestic violence, um, trafficking, uh, and all that kind of stuff. And so I was playing around with text and imagery and using photograms. Uh, so there's 16 of them. There might have been more than, you know, I think that's 16 of them. So they were like the original sketches. And this final piece, which isn't darkroom stuff, um, was part of another exhibition for International Women's Day. And it was kind of my inspiration for this was Joni Mitchell's song, The Paved Paradise and Put Up a Parking Lot. And um, at the time I was kind of so angry with the fact that, you know, the whole global crisis and the 1% of the population hanging on to more wealth than they actually need. So I think that's it. That's just some more solarized stuff and we can escape from that. Um, so yeah, oh, and how do we get back together again? Hello.
Hello. <laughs> gallery view. Hello. <laughs> it's all around stuff's amazing. And I forgot that you'd done the 16 days as well. Which year was that that you? Oh, do, do, do. Um, maybe about 2015 or something. Mm -hmm. Ah, OK, when I was pregnant. That's probably why I <laughs> um, missed it a bit. But yeah, 16 days. It's currently 16 days yes. of action. Yes. Gender -based violence. Into the 10th of, 10th of December. What's today's date? It's the 8th, 9th. So tomorrow's the last day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you I can stuff about that. Yes, uh, I contributed to Edinburgh University's blog because Edinburgh College of mm -hmm. Art this year are, um, are working with the university. And it was really interesting because the woman, Fiona Mackay, who's running it, she wrote about zero tolerance and was involved in the campaign. Mm. And then I, um, I developed a further conversation with Fatou Blady, who I'd photographed in 2017 for the Violence Unseen campaign. And I just, as I started writing the blog, I was like, I don't want this to be my words. I think Fatou like, has a voice and I hate when mm -hmm. people are giving voice mm -hmm. and photography projects. It's like most of the people I work with have got great voices and they know more than I do about you know, their, mm -hmm. their experience. Mm -hmm. So then it became an in-conversation with myself and Fatou and yeah, both got a bit tearful as well. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Um, yeah, it's important to do these things. I think so. I think so. And and, and I think I mentioned it earlier on, I think photography is a great medium for um, getting people's voices out there and seeing things that are quite, can be quite difficult. Um, and I know that with Wi-Fi, yeah, I, I'll suggest, oh, let's do something as part of 16 Days Campaign Against Violence Against Women. And, and it's like, oh my God, what are we going to do? <laughs> What's Margaret suggesting now? Um, but but um, that you encourage that dialogue, and also there can't be too many of these campaigns or too many ways of sharing the information. Do you know, I think it's just amazing that you know, because you're also setting up a safe space for dialogue with. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, I don't expect you know myself included. I don't expect you know us to come up with. The, the idea but you, you start having that conversation you start thinking about it and for my own work I kind of find that um likes of the the stuff which was part of the of our exhibition that we were doing around environment um I kind of these ideas come into my head while I'm sleeping or semi-sleeping <laughs> I kind of yeah I kind of wake up thinking oh they paved paradise and they Put up a parking lot I can do something around this so yes it's, I, I always find it quite fascinating how my kind of mind works mm -hmm. and yeah and it's I don't try and and I suppose it takes me back to that um quote by Sarah Moon where you try and force something and it doesn't work but if you just let yourself kind of kind of go and these things come together and build in your in your brain and you work it out somehow yeah and the work happens mm. it's on a cord doesn't it for, for some people it's that's really nice well I love your work I'm a big fan <laughs> I love all your community activism as well and mm. I like that you're not afraid to have difficult conversations and you set those up in a really nurturing way and in a nice space so that's been a big learning curve for me as well working with you so it's been great um, but that's us all done that's us all done. Um, but I just want to say thank you to everyone. And I saw loads of comments from, um, I'll just quickly go into the Facebook page to see. I know we had Kat Gollock here. Kat's got an exhibition on its stills at the moment, which you should go and see. Is it still on, Kat? Rachel Colley, John Davey, Alan Sutherland, Ray French having a cuppa. Um, <laughs> Nikki, Nikki Bird. Oh, excellent. Hi, Nikki. Uh, hello, Nikki. I'd, meant, I'd, I'd actually meant to mention that that I love the stuff that Nikki's doing on Instagram at the moment. Um, I know that she does a lot of work, but but I think her current stuff on Instagram is brilliant. Yeah, uh -huh. about lockdown and like the yeah. day. Yeah, I have enjoyed it. There was one that she posted one day, and I was like, "That's out of Margaret's flat." <laughs> That's not much of enough. <laughs> and I messaged her. <laughs> I think it had been raining, and she'd popped up. Mm. took a photo from your house um but yeah there's just there's so many good things coming on and thank you everyone for all your comments wait till you read all these lovely comments 
afterwards. Thank you so much, everyone. And um, just a little quick, I hope you don't mind, this is our last leather before <laughs> Christmas. Mm. Um, we're taking bookings for next year for the camera, the photographic portrait, mindful meanders, night photography and abstract photography, and there are gift vouchers available and the day courses have been sponsored by the Little Green Van and Portobello, you get a lovely delicious hot drink, mm. and also by Chiviernos Pizza, who are sending like mind-blowingly massive pizzas for us to enjoy on the prom as part of the workshop, so that's all kind of free within the cost of the outdoor workshop, so please... What? Not that people need to have, not that, not that people need to have um, enticements like that because the workshops are brilliant as they are. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I enjoy them and the feedback's really nice, but it's really nice that other small local businesses are kind of mm -hmm. supporting us and stuff like that. And that's a whole sense of community. So yeah. if you want to or you know somebody that wants to come in the workshop, I can promise that it'll be fun and they get to be daft with me all day and go my way having been fed and learned something. So what can be worse than that? Um, but everyone have a good Christmas. I'm sure we're doing an advent calendar, so I'll keep wishing you all a good Christmas, but I hope everybody has a good mm. hunger down. Yeah, and go <laughs> and walking around Portobello and see all these amazing one wonder windows. Yeah, and also um, shout out to Brenna Jessie, who is currently doing a duke. She's going wild swimming every day for um, 16 days of active crisis Scotland. And um, Brenna today, last time I checked, had raised £10,000. Wow, excellent. And um, she went in recently with Sandy Brindley, who's just moved to Portobello from rape crisis as well. And it's just, it's been so nice seeing them every day and the kind of, you know, raising awareness in such a lovely mm. way in Portobello. So if you've got money to donate, donate it to rape crisis, I would say. And um, yeah. thank you. And I'll see you on the prom soon. Yeah, definitely. Oh, see you <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye.